है फ्रेंड्स दिस इज संपदा कुलकर्णी फ्रॉम द चैनल टेक टॉक्स हियर आई एम टू एक्सप्लेन द कंसेप्ट ऑफ सर्क्युलर क्यू डेटा स्ट्रक्चर इन दिस वीडियो सीरीज आई हैव कवर्ड फर्स्टली वाय टू लर्न सर्क्युलर क्यू देन इन नेक्स्ट वीडियो वी हैव गॉन थ्रू द इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट सर्क्युलर क्यू देन वी हैव सीन फीचर्स ऑफ सर्क्युलर क्यू how circular queue works then what different operations we can perform on a circular queue from which the first operation we have seen insertion operation then we have seen the deletion operation and now we are going to see the next part how to perform both insertion and deletion combine operation on a circular queue so dear friends if you want to see any of the part if you are not knowing any of the concept of you want to learn the circular queue in detail for your reference i am providing a shortcut link in this right up corner where it will be having the whole playlist for circular queue data structure so friends let's move to the next part before moving to the next part i would like to request you to subscribe my channel tech talks and keep the bell ringing now let's start with the combine operation that is insertion and deletion operation on a circular queue let's go through the basic features of circular queue first of all now i am considering that you must be knowing the basic features like the circular queue behaves just same as of a linear queue where like a linear queue circular queue is also performs n queue or the insertion operation at the rear end of the queue and delete or de queue operation is perform at the front end of the queue if we are going to perform or we are going to start to perform any of the operation on a circular queue initially your circular queue is empty and to indicate the circular queue is empty we are going to point both front and rear at minus 1 position now here you supposed to consider that i am explaining you all these thing with respect to circular queue implementation with the help of sequential data structure that is nothing but the array data structure so that's why i am considering here both the rear and front at minus 1 position so dear friends let's move to the next part to perform first of all the insertion operation here i am going to focus on the insertion operation algorithm in detail so what is my first step first step is to check whether my queue is full or not but how to check the queue full condition so here this is the condition to check the queue is full or not this is the modulo division operation and that we will divide with the help of size of the queue now let's consider that the queue size is 10 or indirectly we can say that the size of array is 10 now what we supposed to check we supposed to check if both the rear and front we are checking the position of rear and front if front is to the next position of the rear then we can say that the queue is full and that we can check with the help of this condition rear plus 1 modulo 10 if is equal to equal to front then the queue is full if the queue is full then we will display a message circular queue is full and we will exit from the function but if it is no then what will be the next step so the next step is we'll check while insertion of the element if it is a first element or not if it is a first element then we have to initialize both front and rear to zeroth position but how we will check that the it is first element or not by checking the condition front is equal to equal to minus 1 because if the front is equal to equal to minus 1 it indicates that currently your queue is empty and whatever the number whatever the element you supposed to insert into a queue that will be the first element and if it is a first element what we supposed to do 
we supposed to initialize both front and rear to 0 and after that we have to insert the element. So what will be the step to insert the element? So to insert the element we have to follow the instruction like whatever the new element we are going to insert that we have to assign to the array where rear is pointing and that's why the statement is like array of rare equal to new element so here ultimately we are assigning new element to the rare position of the array okay after that now let's if i want to insert a more element then what we have to do or otherwise if this is not the first element what we have to do so here you can see that if it is a first element no if it is not then we have to go to the step number 3 and we have to increment a rare pointer circularly. So let us increment a rare pointer circularly and here you can see that this is nothing but the circular increment. If you want to know more details about circular increment you can go through my previous video and where I have explained all these things in detail. So after incrementing rare circularly, let us move forward to the step number 4 to insert the element and for the insertion of the element I have already explained you the steps. So why we have to perform circular increment because this is nothing but a circular queue. Let us assume that you are at the end of the circular queue and you want to insert a more element then we are going to insert the element at the 0th position. Why to the 0th position? Because this is the circular queue and it avoids the disadvantage of a linear queue where there were the wastage of memory and this circular queue avoids the wastage of memory by incrementing the rare pointer circularly while inserting the element. Now let us see the example. So we are going to insert few elements into the circular queue. Now let us consider that my circular queue is holding a single element. How we can say that whether the both front and rear are pointing at the same position it indicates that it is holding a single element. So my first condition we supposed to check whether it is full. No. Now let us check the next condition whether whatever the inserting element is there is it a first element no so that is why we have to increment the rear circularly to the next position and here I am incrementing rear to the next position that is fifth position and we will insert the element at the position 5. Now let us insert more one more element let us check the first condition it is full no let us check the next condition or move to the next step is first element no perform circular increment rare is now pointing to the sixth position and now insert the element after insertion your circular queue will look like this now let us insert more element is full no is first element no perform circular increment it is pointing to seven and now insert the element let us insert more element we have checked is it full no is first element no perform circular increment and rare is pointing to 8th position and then insert the element. Let us insert one more element let us check if full no is first element no circular increment that is pointing to 9 now and insert the element. Now we can see that my rare is at position 9 and here array size is 10. It means that my rare is at the max minus 1 position. If this is the situation, in that case, can I insert more element in a circular queue? Yes, I can. But how? So this is only the magic of a circular queue and a circular increment. Let's check what we have to do. So first of all, let's check it's full. No. Is the first element? No. And now we have to perform circular increment. Now here I am, I am explaining you in detail how we are going to calculate the rare pointer or the position of rare pointer. Now here you can see that currently rare is holding the position 9 or value 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. 10 modulo 10. 
modulo division is the method which we are going to use where it divides and returns the remainder so 10 divided by 10 remainder will be 0 so what the rear will be holding 0 let's check that whether this 0th position is empty or not if it is empty insert the element and here move to the rear position and we will insert the element into the 0th position so in this way the circular increment works and this is nothing but the magic of a circular cube where it utilizes the space wisely than that of the linear cube now let's move forward for the second operation is nothing but the deletion operation first of all let's see let's go through the deletion algorithm where my first step is to check whether my queue is empty or not why are we supposed to check because if my queue is empty then ultimately it will not be holding any value and if it is empty how could we perform the delete operation so that's why if the queue is empty we will not perform the delete operation but how to check the empty condition so to check the empty condition we will check whether front is initialized at minus one position if it is equal to minus one position then if the condition is true it indicates that the queue is empty display the message and exit from the function but if it is not it indicates that some values are available now after that what will be the second step second step is to check whether the queue is holding single element or not why are we supposed to check this condition again because if it is holding a single element after deletion of that single element your queue is going to become an empty and to indicate that your queue is empty you have to reinitialize both front and rear at minus one position but to perform all these things how to check whether the queue is holding a single element or not by checking the condition if both front and rear are pointing at the same position it indicates that it is holding a single element and after deletion of that element you have to update both front and rear if it is yes then what we have to do return or delete front or a uh, front element and reinitialize the front and rear to minus one position as i explained previously but if it is not holding a single element then we will move to the next step that is step number three and here we will perform the circular increment but here on which uh, pointer we will perform the circular increment we will perform the circular increment on a front pointer because we are performing the delete operation and always delete operation is performed at the front end of a queue so that's why we will perform the circular increment on a front variable now why we have to perform the circular increment because suppose if we are at the end of the queue that is at the max minus one position or at the ninth position in our case where 10 is the size of the queue if you are at the ninth position and still few elements are available for the deletion we have to move forward to the zeroth position and if you are at the ninth position it means that 9 plus 1 is 10 10 modulo 10 is 0 so ultimately front is initialized the position 0 by performing the circular increment and after that we will move forward for the step number 4 to delete the element so what the steps we supposed to follow to delete the element whatever the element is present at the front position of the array that we will assign to the deleted element and we will display that deleted element so in this way we are going to perform the delete operation and this was nothing but the deletion algorithm now we will see how to perform delete operation onto the queue so now let's see consider these are the three elements are available with us in our circular queue where we have to check whether the circular queue is empty or not if it is not let's check whether it is holding a single element no then perform a circular increment of the front variable and then delete the element so let's increment front to the circular uh, circularly next position and delete this element 
and after that let's delete one more element for that let's check whether the queue is empty or not no uh, whether it is holding single element no let's increment front to the next position circularly here currently front is at ninth position move to the zeroth position by performing circular increment and then delete the element so after deleting your queue will look like this now again if i want to delete the element from your circular queue what i'll do i'll first of all check whether it is empty no whether it is holding single element yes because here you can see that both front and rear are at pointing at the same position it means it means that the single element is present in your queue if the single element is present then what we have to do we have to reinitialize both front and rear at a minus one position and then you have to perform the delete operation onto the element and here you can see that your front and rear both are at minus one position it indicates that your queue is empty it is not having any of the element and in this way we have performed both the insertion and deletion operation combinedly onto the queue now let's see what are the advantages of a circular queue it overcomes the drawback of linear queue where there was the wastage of memory and that's why the circular queue utilizes the space very efficiently than that of the linear queue so thank you all dear friends for listening and watching my video if you like the content and the video please do not forget to give the comment if you like the content and the video please subscribe my channel here i am providing you a subscription link along with this i am providing you a shortcut link for a next video of this video series along with the playlist of a circular queue thank you happy data structuring happy learning thank you